Welcome to Gateway Church Wirral Online. We're so delighted that you're with us this morning. So great that you can be a part of our live streamed gathering. Just to welcome you to this space and what we're all about. Um, to say that we as a church, we're all about seeing people meet with God, encounter him for all his goodness and his grace and for lives to be changed by him. As a church, we want to see a world transformed, made better and better through every life transformed by the grace of God. So our hope and our prayer for you today, meet with Jesus in the things that we're saying, in the things that we're singing, in the way that we're opening up the word of God, which is alive for us today. We want you to know Jesus, know that he loves you, know that he has a plan for your life. And as we're going through our gathering this morning, do please connect with us here in this live stream space. You can fill in our connection card, the tab I think is at the top of your screen. Request prayer if you'd like to. There are great friendly people who would love to pray with you. And do just connect with us in any and every way that you'd love to. As a church, we gather. That's what we're about today. When we come to the close of our gathering, I'll tell you how you can connect with us going forward into the week. So have a really great time. Be blessed. Enjoy yourself and enjoy Jesus we pray. Good morning everyone. Welcome to Gateway Church Wirral. Whether you're here in, in the church building or at home during our live stream, warm welcome to every one of you. I'd like everyone to stand up while you're here in the building or at home. Let's just uh, spend this time together celebrating God's goodness and praising him with song.
You are mighty, oh God. Praise to you. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me
church, come on, let's raise our hallelujahs, shall we? Let's raise our praises to the King of Kings. He's alive, he's alive forevermore. We worship him. We worship the one who was victorious over death and sin and hell. He gives us life in all its fullness, life eternal. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Church, let me read to you this morning Psalm 84. You don't need to sit down or anything like that unless you really need to. Just reflect upon these words. You can get it out in front of you. It might come up on the screen. There it is. Brilliant. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield. O God, look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Is there anybody here this morning who trusts in the Lord? Is there anybody, maybe at home on the live stream, wherever you are, do we trust in the Lord? You know, that psalm was a psalm for those who were going on a physical journey to a physical place, Jerusalem, to the temple. And it speaks there of blessings in dry and weary places. It speaks of strength to the weak and the weary. Now, here's the joy, children of God. We don't have to go to that one place at that one time because God is with us. That was a great place to raise your hallelujah, I think. God is with us. And the joy and the treasure is that everything that's spoken of there, and for us to say, I would rather dwell in the courts of God than anywhere else. One day is more precious than a thousand elsewhere. To serve at the gate is more precious than to sit in the the courts and enjoy the, the blessings of wickedness. No, just to be with God. And this morning, I just wanted to spend a moment or two just reflecting upon that treasure and that joy that is ours if we are in Christ Jesus, that our God is with us. He is present by His Spirit. We are with Him. This is a joy and a treasure to us. But can we just extend that a little further, can we? I'm sure we're aware uh, this morning of maybe uh, brothers and sisters in the church and loved ones who perhaps can't be here for various different reasons. You know, some of them might be joining us on our live stream. We're so grateful for that. Many others, they're perhaps sick, they're struggling. You know, particularly I want to raise before you this morning, Thelma, um, who we know and love so dearly, don't we? And she is wrestling with intense pain at the moment in her body. I want us to lift her before the Lord. Can we do that? You know, there are others we know who aren't with us this morning because of other sicknesses and ongoing things. I'm thinking of Ted, I'm thinking of Richie. There are many others that we know and we love. You know, maybe they're on the live stream, maybe they're not. And maybe there's so many other names that I could mention. I know there are. But we're wanting to pray, God, let them know that they are in your courts. Amen. That, God, you are with them. Amen. 
and that the blessings, Lord Jesus, are not dependent upon these four walls. Isn't that right, church? The blessings of God are to his people forevermore. So church, could you lift your hearts? Could you lift your hands, whether you're here in the building, whether you're at home? Let's lift our voices and let's begin to lift our loved ones. Let's lift our church family before the Lord. Thank God for the blessings that are ours. But come on, would you begin to intercede on the behalf of those who need the touch of God today? And I'm thinking of Dave with his back this morning. And God, we're wanting to lift these loved ones and we're saying, Jesus, freedom and healing Lord Jesus, set them free of pain, Lord God. Let them know, Lord Jesus, that they are in your courts. Nothing can separate them from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. They love you, God, and you love them with an everlasting love. Jesus Christ, we declare this goodness and this grace. Praise is an honor and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And church, can we perhaps look up and look out a little further this morning? Can we do that? You know, this past year, 18 months, it's had a tendency to make us look in, hasn't it? It's had a tendency to make us look down and look in and perhaps lose a sight of who our God is, how big he is and what he's doing in his big wide world. But maybe we also lose sight of of some of the struggles and the sufferings of those around us. And this morning, church, I know we can come this morning and, and we need to, we must intercede, should we not, on the behalf of our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan upon the part of those Christians who have come to faith. And that church, I don't know whether you know, it's been radically and fast growing in that area, even in the face of the, the struggles that they have had. And we know that these present days are speaking fear and trouble upon them. But we want to speak a better word this morning, don't we? We want to speak the protection and the freedom and the grace of God. And we want to speak Christ's kingdom to come in that place, don't we? And you know, I could name a dozen, two dozen, a hundred countries around our world where there are different struggles for the cause of the gospel. There are struggles of the saints. And so church, you you know, you've got so many, I know in our church, we're so blessed. We represent so many places and so many peoples. Come on, church. Let's lift the people of God around this world before the Lord. Can we do that? Lift the people you know. Lift those that you don't know. Lift the churches that are going, seem to be going great and those that are in tough times. And say, Jesus, your kingdom come. Your will be done, Lord Jesus. We proclaim the peace of the gospel upon a world of need. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, our prayer is particularly, Lord God, for our brothers and sisters in you. Lord Jesus Christ, would they know, Lord God, that protection, that strengthening, that covering of being in your presence, in your courts, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would continue to build your church through these dearly beloved ones who teach us daily, Lord God, things of faith, Lord God, and things of firm. Lord Jesus Christ, move in your world. Move in your world. Oh, Jesus, our prayer, our prayer joins with that of the psalmist. Oh, Lord God of hosts, oh, God of heavenly armies, hear our prayer. Give ear, oh, God of Jacob. Behold our shield, oh, God, look on the face of your anointed. Jesus, those who are near and far, those that we know and we don't know, look upon the face of your anointed, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayers. Jesus, I pray you would hear the prayers of those in this place this morning, the prayers of those in our sister church, Oasis in Wallasey this morning, the prayers of those on the live stream this morning and catching up on this as as shifts and, and whatever allows, Lord Jesus, hear the prayers of your people. God, we long for you. We long for your coming, for your kingdom. We long for your courts. We long for our home. And Jesus, we want everybody to know that home. Jesus, do this work. Do this work, we pray. Amen. 
Church, we're going to move again into praise and worship of our God and our King for a moment or two. Can I invite you two things? Families, I think you're going to be invited in a moment for your children, uh, and they're going to go and have a party. Many of you know it was going to be our festival in a field today, but the weather conspired against us again. Uh, But we will not be dismayed or downhearted. There is so much fun waiting for the children in the minor hall. And we're extending it, Grace tells me, up to those in year nine, I think. So I hope that includes everybody who wanted to be included. Uh, And and, um, and, uh, and so in a moment or two, when when the little notice comes up, head through the back there with families. Um, would you please take your children to the, the, the children's team? Um, if you don't know the way, Corrie will help you. Um, and, um, and that's going to be absolutely um, fantastic. As we come to worship now, we've been looking up and looking out. Um, at home or here, um, can I invite you to do something? I know you always think I'm a bit strange when I invite you to do this, but it's precious. Would you grab your phone if you've got your phone with you? At home, if you've got your phone with you, could you send a message to somebody that you care about? And maybe they're not in church, not able to be in church. Uh, maybe they're far, far away, you know, in another country or whatever. Um, you might want to WhatsApp them, save the, uh, the texting charges. Um, but just tell them that you love them and that you're praying for them and that you hope to see them, uh, be with them in the presence of God soon. Encourage somebody. Would you do that? And Ronald, Molly, the team, they're going to lead us in worship now. Thank you. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been and forever will be. Sing with me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thank you, Jesus. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness mercy and let's declare it great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings of mine with 
10,000 beasts. Come on. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes.
time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore, forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his Bless your holy name, dear God. Bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. Oh God, what is what a privilege it is this morning to be able to bless your holy name. Lord Jesus Christ, we acknowledge before you. Here's the truth of the gospel. Once upon a time we didn't even know your name. We were lost in ignorance and sin, in open rebellion against you and destined for death. But Jesus, you have come. You have spoken your name to us. Jesus, you are the one who saves. Emmanuel, you are God with us. And Jesus, we who have received your name, we have received your saving grace. We can sing and know this truth. Great is your faithfulness. Lord Jesus Christ, it is our privilege and it is our joy to sing these things today. God, make this the song of every day, the song of our lives, as we live lives that worship you. In your holy and righteous name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You're more than welcome to grab a seat if you'd like to do so. Praise God. He is good. And his love endures forever. Amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Um, as I said already, we, we have many joining us on the live stream. Our friends at Oasis, they're not joining us via the live stream this morning because uh, Pastor Malcolm, who's uh, relocated into the area with his wife Denise to be a part of our family as a church, uh, they're over there ministering and they're having a big lunch afterwards and they're expecting lots of folks, which is great. Um, I hope that you're praying for the people at Oasis. Um, by God's grace, they're seeing families and individuals being added to the church for which we thank God. And, uh, and just next week, they're going to be baptizing uh, the first people as the fruit of what God is doing there um, and in our time together with them. So we praise God for that. Um, it is really good. And I'm so glad to know, I, I, as I was just looking at the live stream, I know that many of our church family, uh, they're on holiday, but they're able to join us via the live stream, which is great. And not only that, but I'm sure there are many new people as well. Uh, it's great here in the building to see um, folks who normally perhaps are on our live stream, but you're here joining with us. God, God's enabling you to do that. And uh, we're so blessed to know that and to see new faces here as well. Uh, new faces and, 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 and other faces that we know, but we're not seeing in a while. It's really good to see you. God bless you. I hope you're encouraged. Um, during this holiday season, of course, folks are here, there, and everywhere. Um, but we're looking forward to a wonderful autumn together in God. And over the next few weeks and as we move into September, we're going to be opening up a little more of what it looks like to be a part of Gateway Church. 
uh, not just here gathered in our building, but when we're scattered through the rest of the week. And if you've been a part of our church for any length of time, you'll know that at least half of our church is what we do when we go out of this building. It's a lot more of the time that we have, isn't it? But it's also at least half of our energies, our devotion, our commitment is being together on the mission of God wherever we live, work, and play. And so we're going to be unpacking uh, new things as to how that looks as we go forward into the autumn. If you're new to us as a church, um, online, fill in the connection card. We'd love to connect with you. If you're here, please uh, don't rush off afterwards. We'd love to connect with you. Um, I'll be available as well after we share communion as we close. Now, um, today we're continuing, because we're back in the building and not in a field, uh, we're continuing with a bit of a summer fun um, sermon series that we're doing, or at least I think it's fun. I, I hope by the end of it you still think it's fun as well. Um, and even if you don't think it's fun, will you smile at me anyway? Could we all agree to do that? Should we shake on it? I'm shaking on it. Um, the rest of you, it's, a, it's just assumed. Um, but uh, hopefully you'll have a little bit of fun this morning. We're going to the movies. Uh, we're going to the movies. And, um, and, and this week for my preparation to preach the Word of God, I went to the movies. Um, and as I joked last week, I kind of want to do this every week. It was kind of fun. I went to a new cinema, Everyman Cinema in Liverpool. Has anyone been there? You get to sit on these super comfy couches and you put in orders for food and they bring you food to your seats. It's fantastic. Uh, advertising over, but you should all go. It's wonderful. It, it does cost more, obviously, but you know, horses for courses. Um, and I went to see a movie called In the Heights. Yeah, I thought you might like a good musical. There was something there that could be. I, I never used to be a musical man. Well, I used to be a musical man, but not a man into the musicals. Um, I don't know whether it's getting old or getting a bit soft. I don't know, uh, but I'm, I'm loving it. And as I preach the gospel to myself through the medium of the musical theater that was being presented to me, I was, you know, I was frankly on the brink of tears most of the way through. It was beautiful because God is good. And I don't know whether you've realized, but God is everywhere. Did you know that? Did you know that? You know, the earth is full of God. And if we really get to understand this and start to reveal this, do you know what the promise is? The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That's the only disconnection. God is everywhere, just people don't know it yet. God is everywhere, and yet people are pursuing alternate glories. And our opportunity is not only to know God, but to reveal his glory in the world and say, come on, this little puddle of mine, <laughs> I'm going to let it shine, I don't know, but let these puddles join up and let's see the ocean form. And so there I was watching this incredible movie, I heartily recommend it, and um, on the brink of tears, um, I was being moved powerfully, and we're going to unpack some of the themes I just want to begin with just a, a bit of a, maybe a reality check. Don't worry, this is the, this is the, 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 the bluntest, toughest moment of the, what we're going to do this morning. But bear with me for a moment when I tell you we're all going to die. That's where we're starting this morning. And I, you know, I know that sounds like a very strange thing to say, and I know it lands with us all differently. Some of you think, well, that's a bit silly, or that's a bit funny, or some of you think, well, that's a little close to home, or that's a little painful. But look, we are, 100%. You're going to die, and I'm going to die. Everyone who's ever lived has died, apart from a couple of notable biblical exceptions who got taken up in chariots of fire and the like. But I'm fairly sure I can guarantee that's not going to happen. Um, the only thing that will change that is obviously the return of Jesus Christ. But pending that, this is the nature of it. And you say that's incredibly blunt. Now, I can say this because I know just before I got up here, we sang, didn't we? And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time is come. I don't know what you thought you were singing about, but this is what we were singing about. And if our time on earth is limited, and if our time on earth feels short, and the more of it you live, the shorter it feels, isn't that the truth? Then what is it for? Why is it so precious? Why do we preserve it? Why is this, uh, you know, pandemic year and a half or whatever, why has it so reinforced the sense that life is precious and almost to be preserved, at, well, at a great cost? What is our moment in the sun for? When we're all done, who's going to notice we're gone? What will be the legacy of our living here? And on that note, we're going to take the, um, the trailer, I think, for the movie in the Heights. Have we got that cued and ready to go? Is that okay, guys? Yeah? Super.
why don't you watch this? I think you'll enjoy it. What does Suenito mean? Suenito? It means little dream. That's it? No story? All right, all right, everybody sit down, sit down. It's a story of a block that was disappearing. In un barrio called Washington Heights. The streets were made of music. I am Usnavi, and you probably never heard my name. Reports of my fame are greatly exaggerated. Good morning, Usnavi. Pan caliente, cafe hey. con leche. On these blocks, you can't walk two steps without bumping into someone's big plan. I'm making moves, I'm making deals, but guess what? What? You still ain't got no skills. <laughs> I've been saving up all my pennies in my piggy bank for this day. This is gonna be an emotional roller coaster. The odds are against you. But there's a chance, right? A dream isn't some sparkly diamond. There's no shortcuts. Sometimes it's rough. Yeah, I'm a street light choking on the heat. The world spins around while I'm frozen to my seat. The people that I know They're talking about kicking out all the dreamers. But every day is different, so it's time to make some noise. We had to assert our dignity in small ways. Just listen. Little details that tell the world we are not invisible. Ignore anyone who doubts you. In the heights, we came to work and to live, and we got a lot in common. Ever since I, um, I watched that, I've had the music just going around in my head nonstop. Uh, just every moment, I kind of wake up and it's like, in the heights. And it's, uh, it's just very exciting. Um, I, I haven't yet been able to dance like, like that. Um, but um, look, the, the movie, it's a, it's a kind of profound celebration of life and life full of possibility, sometimes in the face of um, extreme difficulty. You know, I said, I know I joked and I said that we're all going to die. Um, I, you know, I, I did come across a little meme on Facebook this week that said, brain cells, hair cells, and skin cells all die constantly, but fat cells. They, it, it's how it goes. But, but fat cells must have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior because they have eternal life. Did you come, has anyone come across this? Seems to be doing the rounds at the moment. Uh, <laughs> you know, all the other cells, I want them to be saved, not the fat ones. Anyhow, um, moving on, and, and probably as quickly as possible. Um, In the Heights is this um, movie musical. It's based on a Broadway musical by Lin-Manuel Miranda. And he's the guy who was behind Hamilton as well, if you've come across that one. That was pretty big, I think, uh, recently. And it's set in the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York, or Nuevo York, as most of the people in that neighborhood seem to call it. And, uh, and the film revolves around the idea that everybody there has a sueñito. A sueñito. It sounds, it sounds evocative, doesn't it? It sounds beautiful. A sueñito, a little dream. He says you can't go more than, you know, so many steps without bumping into somebody who's got a little dream. Is there anybody here this morning who's got a little dream? I hope you've got some little dreams. And, uh, and, and these little dreams, these sueñitos, they, they form the basis of the movie's investigation and celebration of the immigrant experience, of the hard work and the courage of the highs and the lows. And the sense that pervades the film is that life is short. It can be both sweet and brutal. And something can be made of it. And in fact, not just a something, but a someplace, a true home. And you know, if you see the movie, and I hope that you do, uh, I, I should get a cut of the box office, shouldn't I, at this rate? But if you see the movie, the, the, the pervading senses that they create in an unprepossessing kind of place that wasn't really where anybody came from, but it's where they ended up, they create a place, a sense of home. 
And my hope today is that even through a musical movie, we might learn and be inspired in, in two lessons, really, that to truly desire the home that God wants us to build with him and to be unafraid of the work that building that home will require of us. So firstly, we're going to think about desire for a few minutes, and then we're going to think about work for a few minutes. And if I see you all saying, oh, I just need the toilet when it gets to work, then you're in trouble. Uh, yeah, there's work to be done, church. Come on. Um, desire. You know, one of the main turning points in the movie is there's a moment when this community, this tightly knit, intricately woven community, find out that one of their own has a winning lottery ticket for $96 thousand dollars. I want to point out this is not an advert for playing the lottery right now. I don't think that qualifies as stewardship. Um, but one of them within the neighborhood, they get this $96,000 and cue an outpouring of song. It really doesn't take much for them to start singing in this movie, let me tell you. Um, literally, there's like this guy who's packing up his house um, to move and he starts singing. I don't know whether any of you have moved, but that's least likely to make you want to sing, isn't it? It's just, you just get on your knees and weep. But um, he's like packed the house and he's, everybody sings. But there they are, and they're down at the Lido, the outdoor pool. There's going to be pictures of this movie as, it, as we go along, I think. Uh, there you go. Um, any of you have ever been to a Lido, you know that's how it goes. There's synchronized swimming everywhere. It's all, no, not really. Uh, you go to an outdoor pool, it's just some normally spotty teenager dive bombing you, isn't it? But anyhow, in this pool, the entire neighborhood is singing. And they're singing their sueñitos, their little dreams. What if, they say, what if? My ticket is that 96,000. And for each of them, that's the way that they think that they're going to be able to realize their dream. Truth is, I suppose deep down they know it's not. And in fairness to them, they're all working crazy hard to realize their dreams. But they think, what if? What if this 96,000 was mine? But it's not just lottery pipe dreams. One of the key characters, the kind of narrator character, is a guy called Usnavi. It's an unusual name uh, because when his dad was arriving at New York on the boat, he saw this huge, hulking, immense, crazy boat. And he said, that's incredible. I'm going to call my firstborn after the name of that ship. At which point it kind of turned around and he realized it was a U.S. Navy vessel. And, uh, and so he <laughs> called his child Usnavi. Uh, you've got to love that, haven't you, really? Not only that he wanted to do it, but he followed through, Usnavi. But this guy, Usnavi, he has a dream of resurrecting his dad's beach bar on, on this beautiful sweep of sand in the Dominican Republic. Does anybody want to go? Yeah, I go. <laughs> but, uh, he has this dream. And then there's this lady called Vanessa, and she dreams of getting out of the neighborhood, going downtown, or starting a fashion career. There's another called Nina, who dreams of fulfilling her potential and getting getting a degree at Stanford, uh, which is as much her dad's dream, actually, and the whole community's dream as they channel it through this extravagantly gifted young lady. Dreams are formed, they're longed for, they're worked towards, and as the movie unfolds, it becomes apparent that the dreams are as much about home, home, as anything else. You know, I, I don't think that that is exclusively an immigrant desire to form home, to craft home. But for me, as kind of a, you know, a white middle class guy in a white dominant culture, I think things like this, they can, they can give us a lens to be able to see how precious it is to have home and to form home and craft home. You know, I was born in Clatterbridge Hospital. You can start to age me now because nobody gets born there anymore except by accident. Um, but, uh, and, you know, and, and I grew up you know, in Bebbington and then in Oxton, and you know, I went away from Birkenhead, but then I soon realized my mistake. And, you know, and I came back as swift as I possibly could um, via Nicaragua, actually, which is maybe why I really love this movie so much. Um, but uh, but you know, this sense of home, of crafting that place that is home. This is really what the dreams, these sueñitos, are all about. And they certainly, they, they, this, these immigrant communities, these Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and Cubans and Chileans and all these kinds of communities, they're in Nuevo York. <laughs> they show us so keenly how precious home is. I should have said we could have had that beach on the, the oh, there you go. That was 
what it looks like. Sweep a beautiful sound. Home. Where is your home? Where is your home? I, you know, don't tell me it's Borough Road or. <laughs> Where is your home? What makes home? At the close of the book of Genesis, we come to the end of the lives of um, first Jacob and then Joseph, his dearly loved son. They're the last of the patriarchs, those founding fathers of the people of God, and they come to the end of their earthly days. Jacob, the older, um, he knows he's about to die, and he commands his son in Genesis 49, his sons, and he says this, I am to be gathered to my people. And he means spiritually, there's a spiritual dynamic of being gathered. And he says, bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field at Machpelah to the east of Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought, Abraham was forefather, bought with the field uh, from Ephron the Hittite to possess as a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it were, brought, were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew up his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. And they did exactly as they had been told. He was like, you know, the, the end of my days is coming. But when that time concludes, I know that there's a land of promise. There's a place. It's a place that is full of the sense of home. And that's where you're going to put me. Because the promise is going to be fulfilled. I believe it. I trust it. So that's where you're going to put me. It gets more exciting, I think, than this. You're like, Pastor Greg, how are you so excited about burials? Um, well, I'm strange. But as Joseph nears his death, and they've gone back to Egypt, where Joseph was fulfilling the will of God for his life, in Genesis 50, he says this to his brothers. He says, I am about to die, but God will visit you. That's that's powerful. That's prophecy. Did you know that? Don't just skip over these things. He will visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. Yeah? It's like I, I'm living my life. I'm going to come to the end of my life. There's not perhaps going to be much left. Now, maybe some of us, we feel like we come to the end of our days and there's not that much left then. But he says, even when I'm just bones, you're going to take my bones to the place of promise. Because home isn't just a temporal thing. It's, just, it's not just something that's forced upon us. It's not just a matter of circumstance. Home, for the people of God, is a matter of a great deal more. This land of promise, this place of home. And these guys, they know they're dying. The promise is not yet fully realized, but they want more than anything to be there. You know, we read uh, earlier on in our gathering from Psalm 84. Maybe you want to meditate on it through the week if you read the scriptures. And, and there is a sense of longing. Longing. Did you pick up on the longing, how intense it was? You know, at the beginning there, my soul longs, yes, faints. For the courts of the Lord, my heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. There's a sense of place, certainly, but it's a sense of, of person, of God. And God himself being the truest sense of home, a place of belonging, a place of home. And, you know, the psalm is shot through with the realization, the celebration, that home, it's more than where the heart is. <laughs> it's where the keeper of our hearts is. You know, you, you kind of get these kind of little bits of embroidery, don't you? Or, you know, little bits of woodwork or whatever. Home is where the heart is. Uh, you know, these kinds of... And, and I get the sense, but there's more. The Bible teaches me, and it can teach you if you'll let it, that there's a one who wants to dearly treasure your heart. Who wants to take such tender and loving and transformative care of you. Of the very person that you are, not just in this moment, but eternally. Your heart, we say, don't we? A shorthand for these things. And he wants to treasure your heart. And there is a place. There's a home. Him and you and you and him. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God, sings the psalmist. 
You know, I was so impressed. I was frankly quite moved. I've said already, uh, probably doesn't take much for you to imagine your pastor having a bit of a, you know, teary moment. Um, when the lights go down, it's all right, isn't it? Um, and it wasn't just because I finished my hot dog. Um, but, you know, you're kind of moved by these things. And um, the characters in the film, they form their dreams of home so strongly and they work so crazily hard for them. I was a little convicted, I've got to tell you. You know, there's, there's a lot of people in our world that work a lot harder than, I was going to say a lot of us, but I can't put that on you, can you? Can I? I just, me, at any rate. Um, they work so hard. And what became apparent as they journey through the story, you know, it revolves around this key kind of hinge moment, a transformative moment. There's a heat wave that's building through the kind of latter half of the movie. And then there's a blackout that comes in New York and you see it from above. And this whole Washington Heights area just loses power bit of a metaphor. And it's that the place and purpose of home, it, it evolved for them over time. This is, the, this is what happens in that, this turning moment. They're an immigrant community, and though they often, they, they've got up to like fifth generation members of the community. They're the place of, uh, is, uh, of sen- you know, the sense of place, their strong connection, it, it's there in Washington Heights, yet they're each still struggling to define what home really is. There's two um, impossibly beautiful young romantic couples in this movie. I know loads of movie stars are beautiful, but these, these ones are disgusting. Um, it's, it's not all right to be that good looking. Uh, we can put them up on the screen so you can be disgusted by how beautiful they are as well. Um, and there's these two couples. Um, they struggle with what is really home. The ones in the foreground, um, that's Usnavi with the hat on and Vanessa. And they seem to be pulling in these opposite directions. Um, I know they're not right now. Um, They're quite close. But in the movie, they're kind of pulling apart um, in opposite directions internally. You see, Vanessa, she wants to move forward. She wants to move away from her past. She's striving to leave the old neighborhood, to to go to a new and a shiny apartment in a downtown neighborhood where it's not the same kind of immigrant community. She seems to believe her satisfaction lies in moving on, moving forward, leaving much of the old behind. I don't know whether this resonates with anybody. This can sometimes be that. That can be the sense that we might have. That actually it's all about going forward. It's all about leaving behind. It's redefining ourselves newly. Hmm. Usnavi, on the other hand, spends much of the movie wanting to go back. He wants to go back to the Dominican Republic. He wants to go back to his father's beach, even to his father's old business. He calls them his island memories. Sounds evocative, doesn't it? And in both ways, they're kind of trying to form home. But have they really got a hold of how you form home? The other beautiful young couple in the background, Nina and Benny, they have their own struggles. Benny is wanting to build something good in his home neighborhood, the network. And, and, and as Nina comes home from Stanford, they resurrect this love affair. And she, this genius daughter of his boss, no less, now at Stanford, she's the great hope of the block. And everyone believes that she will transcend the limitations of their immigrant experience, that her intelligence will be a game changer. And needless to say, that's a pretty big pressure. Not least when she finds herself struggling outside of the loving embrace of her community, struggling against racial prejudice, when she's in a new place where those fifth generation support networks are not around in the same way. And she feels that sense of the neighborhood cheering her on more as a a distant memory. You know, she wrestles with it. She wrestles with dropping out, with why she is really there. Will it really make a difference? She doesn't feel that she belongs. That's a pretty intense thing, isn't it, when you're trying to craft home and you feel like you don't belong? You know, it seemed to me that there was a gaping divide between her experience of Stanford and the longed ex- longed-for experience. Perhaps there's a bit of a divide sometimes between where we find ourselves in the here and now and and perhaps spiritually speaking, the things that we hope for of heaven, whether ultimately or or the things of heaven that break into our world, for they do. And the neighborhood cheering her along, it seemed to me that it could be a little bit like that great cloud of witnesses. You know, in Hebrews 12 and verse 1, cheering on the saints as they faithfully run the race. I don't know about you, sometimes, and I think it's more about me than about heaven, those cheers can seem a little distant. 
Sometimes I let those cheers get drowned out by the voices that are inside of me or, or other voices that are around about me that, 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 that swamp what might be. There is a crowd cheering us along. There is a home that we can aspire to, hope for, that we can run to. But as for these young romantic characters, home becomes less what they thought it was. Many of us listening to this, we might think that, that home is, is back or is forward. That home is qualifications or a job, a wife or a husband. It might be kids. It's that picture-perfect house. It's that raft of experience. It's that bank balance. It's this or that. Nina comes to realize maybe Stanford, actually, it's not a way out, but a way back to something she maybe already knew. Usnavi and Vanessa realize maybe home isn't so much about going back in time or, or forward. You know, Usnavi, he sings at one moment, I'm not going to sing to you, don't worry. He sings, I'm running to make it home, and home is where Vanessa's running away from. It's heartbreaking. Oh, you heartless lot. You miserable bunch. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's just so... Ah. In the heat of the moment, Vanessa sings to him, I can find my way home without you. <gasps> Doesn't it get you? need to watch this movie. You miserable bunch. This, this is that sense that they've been wrestling through, and they come to realize in the end, it's not so much about going back in time or forward. It's not about the escape of memory or, or the escape of leaving everything behind. Home is about building a new home. Ultimately, home is about what God has newly built and what he newly wants to build with us. God with us, us with him, here now and forever. It's not an escape. It's not a pipe dream. It doesn't depend upon $96,000 on a lottery ticket. It's not trying to recreate a lost memory. Home is heaven, and heaven is real. Heaven is real, and if we live for heaven, moreover, if we live for the king of heaven, God himself, then heaven, let me tell you, is here as much as it is to come. I know I run the risk of kind of quoting Belinda Carlisle by accident, but um, any 80s people in the... No, 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 like three of us. Ah, oh, I'll let that one go. Heaven is here. I know many of us in our Christian theology and imagination, we think that heaven is just a thing somewhere else once upon a time. The Bible very powerful and profoundly teaches us that heaven is intended and will come to new earth. The Bible teaches us very powerfully and profoundly that the kingdom of God is fully now and not yet. Get your head around that. That when Jesus came, the kingdom of God was at hand. It is near that he inaugurated the fullness of the kingdom, which is being established. Remember me talking about your puddle, joining together with another puddle, making an ocean? It's the kingdom of God. Heaven is here, and it's home. In John chapter 14, the, uh, the disciples are wrestling a bit with this. And Jesus is telling them that he's got a, a house, uh, and this is the imagery he uses it for, for them, and there's rooms he's preparing for all of the people who are, are with him, all of his disciples, everyone who places the trust in him. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come to you and take you to be with me. And he says, you know the way. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know the way. Um, and Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If you didn't know that before this morning, then I hope this really lands with you this morning. Jesus is the way home. Jesus is the way into the loving embrace of your Father. Jesus is the way to the fullness of life now and for eternity. Jesus is the way that heaven comes into your experience now and that you get to live out the fullness of the kingdom of God until the fullness of the kingdom of God is just so very big that it takes over everything. He is the way and the truth and the life. And you know, we might demean Thomas for not really understanding this. Or just after that, Philip 
Um, Jesus says, look, to see me is to see the Father. And then Philip has this brainwave, and he says, Lord, show us the Father. And it's like, Philip, what's, what's wrong with your ears? <laughs> Wash them out, mate. And we might demean them, but you know, Thomas and Philip, I don't know whether you know much about these guys, but you follow their story through into the book of Acts, and you see them kind of post-resurrection, full of the Spirit, and you follow some of the things that we think we might know about them after that. And you'll see some people who, you know, well, they became kind of immigrants, we reckon Thomas might have gone all the way to India, taking the gospel. And they worked crazy hard because what they hadn't understood about home, they started to understand about home. As the very Spirit of God filled them, they realized home is now and it's here. I'm going to work for it. I'm going to work for it with everyone else who will join hand and heart with me in the power of the Spirit. They're going to give themselves. They gave their very lives for this cause. And, and this is, uh, we're going to come into just the very closing thoughts now. Because it's that thought of giving yourself for home. For what it is to be with God and God with us. And craft that sense of home. And, you know, I love words, but there's no way my words this morning can give you the sense of home in the way that something like this movie can. Have I mentioned that you should go see this movie? Uh, has it come up? Uh, you should. Home. Oh, it's so beautiful. And so they worked for it. Throughout the movie, they actually rhyme New York with work. It's like, is that intertwined with their sense of place? Uh, you know, the character who perhaps acts as the biggest kind of emotional heart of the movie, Abuela Claudia, I think we've got a picture of her. She's the, like the grandmother of the, of the neighborhood, of the district. And she makes it plain. There she is. She's right at the heart of that little huddle. And, and she, uh, at one point, she kind of sings or, or speaks um, about coming into the area. Uh, and she says, um, at one point, she says, you can't, I couldn't see Cassiopeia. She comes from Cuba, this kind of rural community. She, I couldn't see Cassiopeia, but I could see some work. And so I did the work. You know, the director of the movie, he said, the story of, of her, it's the rock star story of our grandparents that we never talk about. And he kind of quotes, that, imagines it. Wait, what? You left everything you knew and moved to another country. That's nuts. And he says, we wanted to respect what she was able to accomplish, a motherless child who took care of this community, something that isn't not the normal American ideal of victory. He says, we wanted to give it the place on the big screen that it deserved. And we get captivated by the normal American ideal of victory, or maybe the normal British ideal of victory, of more and more and more. Temporal things pass away. Moth corrupts, thieves break in and steal rust. Things that really won't last. But this emotional heart of the movie shows us that there's more that your work can produce. And look, you know, work is work. You know, she talks about how uh, they would save up their pennies and they bought a pair of velvet gloves uh, because their hands were so cracked by the chemicals and the scrubbing of the floors as they cleaned because that's all they could do before they could speak any English. And, and they just found whatever menial tasks they could do, but they did it with all their heart and all their devotion. And yet they put on those velvet gloves and they said, look, I'm a person. I matter. It's small ways of dignifying their experience. Nina's father, we find, scrimping and saving for her Stanford education. And he has to say to her on one occasion, you don't tell me how much we can afford. You're not the parent. And every parent in the place is like, hallelujah. You tell your kids. Um, <laughs> but they just give what it takes. They work hard. Everything is laid out to form home. It's hard to build home. It costs. It costs everything. Look, if, you, if you're a follower of Jesus and you want to see heaven here on earth, you want to form a home in this place, it costs you everything. Everything. I know we, we front load and we rightly do that to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior costs you nothing because it costs him everything. But sometimes we forget to mention after that that it will then cost you everything. You give your life into his hands. It means you've given your life into his hands. And he uses it for his glory and the good of the world around us. Do you work to build the home that Jesus offers? Do you work for the community of faith? Really work. 
you know, metaphorically or even actually, do your hands ever bleed for the people of God and the household of faith? Do they bleed for the coming of the kingdom into this world? This is what it takes. The cross tells us that it costs Jesus everything for you to come home. And building that home ought to cost us too. He invites us to take up our cross and to follow him. And then the blackout comes in the movie. It comes as a metaphor for being powerless. And yet even then they set off fireworks and there are these lights in the sky. The people of the neighborhood, they're creating home even when they feel like they're in exile. Usnavi, he sings this. He says, maybe you're right, Sonny. Call in the coroners. Maybe we're powerless. A corner full of foreigners. Maybe this neighborhood's changing forever. Maybe tonight is our last night together. However, how do you want to face it? Do you want to waste it? When the end is so close, you can taste it. You'll go cry with your head in the sand. I'm a fly this flag that I got in my hat. Mm. <laughs> and it gets me, and it gets me going. And it's that resonant sense of no matter what the circumstances are about me, no matter that the odds seem stacked against me, I'm going to take up my flag and fly. Because there's work to be done. And it's here, it's now. The characters, really what it comes down to is building home, building home where they are. And they grab each other and they say, home isn't home if you're not home with me. And this is the gospel church. Home isn't home if we don't get to take people there. Craft it and bring home to the people who don't have a home. This is what really, really matters. Would you stand with me, church? If you're at home, you're very welcome. I'd love it if you would stand as well. And in a moment or two, we're going to share in communion. And we're going to be led in song. But before we get led in song from the stage, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to play a song from the, the musical. You can't talk about a musical without hearing the music, can you? It's called Finale. And it's all about this sense of home, of what they've crafted, what they long to craft, where they're going. And church, can I invite you maybe just to bow your heads and to consider, contemplate your heart, your home. Consider this town, this world, this world. How, God, are you inviting us to work for home? And to long for it more than we long for the bits and bobs, the bells and whistles, which really don't matter. This character, Nina, she says on numerous occasions, she says, quiet, just let me listen to my block. And she listens to the, her place. And she listens to the call on her life. And you know, this is what we're doing. We listen to the Holy Spirit. And I know you might think it's strange. Pastor Greg's going to play a bit of secular music and we're going to listen to the Holy Spirit. But I reckon you can do it. Listen to your block. Would you do that? Say, Holy Spirit, how would you have me craft home on my street, my family, my neighborhood, my workplace, my school, college, university, wherever it is. Come on, let's take this track and then we're going to come into worship as we close. Washington Heights and now the crack of dawn I pack as life goes on and on and on Time to go but I'm doing the math On this cash money to have Sonny stay on his path Well I really wanted me up on the beach With margaritas in my reach And soon that's how it's gonna be And look at me leaving today On a 747 board in JFK The hydrants are open Cool breezes blow Drinks are open, cool breezes blow. Cool breezes blow.
memories off the Hudson. Just when you think you're sick of living here, the memory floods in. The morning light off the fire escapes. The nights at Bennett Park blasting big pun tapes. I'ma miss this place to tell you the truth. Kevin dispensing wisdom from his dispatch booth in the dawn. Vanessa at the salon. We gotta move on. But who's gonna notice we're gone? When our job's done, as the evening winds down to a cross, son. Can I ease my mind when we're all done? When we resigned in the long run, what do we leave behind? Most of all, I miss Abuela's whispers, doing the lotto pick six every Christmas. In five years, when this whole city's rich folks and hipsters, who's gonna miss this raggedy little business? Hey, you. Hey. Do you have to? Church, just remain in an attitude of prayer, would you? As the song continues. The lyric continues, that's what makes my life complete. We're home. And if not me, who keeps our legacy? This corner is my destiny. Brings out the best in me. We pass the test and we keep pressing. And yes, indeed, you know I'll never leave. If you close your eyes, that hydrant is a beach. That siren is a breeze. The fire escapes a leaf on a palm tree. We're home. Lord Jesus, my prayer for our church, for one another, for myself and each and every one of us, Jesus, is that, God, we would not be people who are so desirous of escape, either escape in the here and now and directing our energies to escape to some imagined false sense of home, nor that we should be those who spiritually desire an escape of a false sense of heaven, somehow removed from the very people that you love and have died for. But that, Jesus Christ, we would realize that here we are on this corner and we are home. And Lord Jesus Christ, the call, the command, the commission of God upon us is that we might craft heaven here on earth. You have told us, Jesus, to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus, you are asking us to make your home here. You gave everything, Christ Jesus, that you make, might make home with us through your death and your resurrection. Jesus, that we also would be willing to give everything that we might work with you to make that home. Move us, I pray. Shift our desires. Make us workers. Be glorified. As we come into our closing song, we have communion here at the front of the church. And as has been our pattern recently, we invite each and every person who knows and loves Jesus and follows him to come and take as and when you feel ready and you can eat the bread which speaks of the body of Christ broken for you and you can take the cup which speaks of his blood shed for you and the life that is found in the blood. This morning, can I invite you to do so with that resonating in your heart and your mind that Christ Jesus who gave everything so that you might be at home with him, invites you to take up your cross. Make his home here for the sake of each and every one. May God bless you as you come and share in communion as we sing and close. If you don't yet know whether your life is in God's hands and you're following in his way, I'm gonna be available just at the side here and I would love to talk with you and pray with you and help you to know that truth, that you can be in God and know Christ in you, the hope of glory. God bless you. Let's share together in song and in communion as we close. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope, with no place to begin. 
Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began, ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my and he called me his friend when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But when Jesus arose with our freedom in hand, that's when death was arrested in my life. Lord, with this newness of life, may we live life in accordance to your will. Bring about your kingdom here on earth. For where you are, 
is where we should be. And where you are is where we will be by your grace and for your glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you in the power of his might. Enjoy the rest of your day. Once again, it's been such a delight to be able to share together as a church this morning. And uh, we know uh, that taking what God has been doing in our lives, we can go and have wonderful weeks with him. Just to um, invite you um, to journey together with one another as we go through the week. We as a church, we don't just gather, but we get going into what God has for us together. And we have these things called transform communities. We would love to help you to connect with other like-minded people who are exploring God's goodness and grace and seeing how they can be a part of his transforming work in the world. So again, hit us up, get in touch. We'd love to help you to connect. Anything that you need, any prayer requests, do let us know. And we'll love to see you again this time next week. God bless you and bye for now.